In this video I'm gonna walk you through the botanical visible features on logs that are used in identifying wood. Let me start off with saying that identifying wood species based on wood sample alone or a sliver alone is not always possible because not all the botanical keys are found alone in the wood. In this case we know that this is Chinese sumac because we've got the bark, we've got heartwood, we've got sapwood, uh, and we've got twigs with leaf scars, sorry, there, with leaf scars, we've got leaf stalks, we've got the seeds, we've got books uh, that can uh, that can identify that yes indeed this is Chinese sumac but uh, if you only have the uh, a wood sample you might need extra books like Professor Professor Hoadley's book with uh, microscopic shots and uh, and technical stuff uh, you might need to measure the weight of the wood the electrical properties, the thermal conductivity and other properties of the wood and just look it up in, uh, in tables and charts uh, including its uh, physical uh, structural uh, uh, properties so it could be quite involved. I'm gonna cover the basic terminology for the visible features in the wood that are found in the logs not in the roots because those could look differently uh, not in uh, uh, cancerous bulbs or bulges that you find sometimes on trees and uh, not everything that looks woody is made of wood bamboo parquet flooring is not made of wood it just looks like wood bamboo is a grass so it's the features on this log will not appear on a bamboo floor uh, section. I also use uh, handheld loops, either small one or bigger one or this kind to make identification possible. So it's uh, and and microscopes of course. So we're gonna be staying with the visible no microscope let's start off with this log here radial cut if you cut the log this way it's a radial cut or a radial plane here although this is not a circle no tree ever is a circle but they are sir, they are somewhat circular they do have a middle and in a circle a line that's going from the middle to the outermost to the circumference of the circle then that's a radius so this cut is in the direction of the radius it's a radial cut what you see on it when you cut a board out of this say you you saw it here and you make a board out of it then this is gonna be called end grain so radial cut end grain same thing almost this one is an axial cut because this is the axes of the log around which this could rotate it would be an axle of symmetry and a rotational axle of symmetry so this is an axial cut this is the diagonal in this circle if it was a circle and uh, this cut along the diagonal diameter or uh, or axis is an axial cut if a board is cut out of this this is face grain and here we have the last cut it's uh, it's made between two points it's between two points on the circumference but does not go through the middle it's a tangential cut okay it's not entirely a, ten, uh, a tangent line but uh, we'll go with that it's called a tangential cut and what you see here is edge grain all right so radial cut end grain axial cut face grain tangential cut edge grain typically 
boards can be sawn as this plane like this where the cut lines are parallel like so those are the cut lines all right plain sawn or flat sawn and then and then the rings that you see these growth rings that i'm going to talk about in a minute but that's the next feature growth rings uh, the growth rings run in this direction that you will see you will be able to see where which direction the pith of the tree originally was because the uh, growth rings or annular rings curve towards the middle of the tree, the center of the tree known as the pith of the tree all right the pith is soft and squishy usually sweet and chewable and uh, there's my nail mark in it okay it's not a structure or part of the tree but it's there so if the tree is cut differently quarter sewn like this one cut there and one cut there and the rest of the cuts then go this way I'll make it this way you get the idea this way then it is a radial oh sorry it's a it's a quarter sawn or edge grain cut okay and those are the three major cuts shrinkage and dimensional changes are all different to the boards uh, and, and dependent on which way they were cut from the log what you see on the end grain here is splitting and these kind of these splits and cracks are called checks check okay because it's losing water rapidly and on a uh, at the sawmill these are painted so they don't crack out and you don't lose a length of the sawn boards on account of those end cracks or checks so the growth rings are produced by the tree because it is growing in pulses fast growth slow growth fast growth slow growth slow growth produces a narrow band of uh, of uh, uh, on, on this concentric circle and the faster growth produces a wider band here what's in these bands is uh, cells that are that's why I have these plastic straws here cells that look like these plastic straws this is a vessel element this is a vascular plant it's got the cells formed in the log like this now not all the cells in the log are the same size so I have smaller one I have bigger ones and they don't all start at the same spot and finish at the same spot because that wouldn't make a very strong tree no they all overlap and interlock so one starts there and then that one starts there and those one there and there they all interlock like so and they all grow and bond together okay that makes sense these are hollow vessel elements and in some trees these are really really hollow in some tree species they are bigger some are smaller and in some of them there are membranes across them okay or at the end of the cell both ends sometimes those end membranes dissolve out when the when the cell finishes growing okay so sometimes you do have membranes that you can still see depending on at exactly where the cut is made you will see membranes or you will see lots of holes depending depending on what kind of wood it is if it's an open grain species and that has lots of open vessel elements if it's a closed grain species it's going to have lots of membranes across I mentioned that this is a ring porous tree I didn't say that word but this is a ring porous species these pores also known as these vessel elements these pores are in these bands producing these growth rings and uh, 
and uh, these rings are the that's why it's called the ring porous tree okay uh, with uh, where temperature and water levels vary throughout the year that's why you have a slow growth sorry the slow growth is the narrow is the narrow band and the uh, and the wider band is the fast growth so this is spring wood that's late wood or summer wood whatever but basically that's produced in the winter when there is when there is uh, when there is a uh, cold and uh, and the trees don't grow much in cold day they like warm weather so if you have a tree from trop tropical regions you don't have a ring porous tree you have a diffuse porous tree because you don't have these growth rings you have very faint ones if any and and uh, and also you don't have much of this pattern on the face grain or edge grain you have different patterns you have barely any patterns on it because there are no sudden periods with different rates of growth because temperatures around the equator are almost the same all year round with the same amount of sunlight and the same temperatures and the same amount of precipitation all year round so those are diffuse porous tropical species this is a ring porous coming from a temperate climate okay so that would be uh, that would be the terminology oh almost done last one uh, going back to heartwood and sapwood you can see the color differences here starting from the pith this part here is cardboard brown and then you have a band that's somewhat greenish and then you have this Garfield orange or I don't know what color that is you can also see it more accentuated there and this Garfield orange also continues around the edge down there um, these are minerals in the heartwood that the tree deposits and not a lot of uh, water or mineral transport is taking place in the heartwood most of the sap is circulated in the sapwood which is closer to the bark and in some species there is a sharp line between sapwood and heartwood not on this one but there is always sapwood there is always heartwood and uh, on the bark uh, there are two uh, two layers there you can kind of see it inner bark and outer bark sometimes the outer bark is thicker corky sometimes it flakes off or peels off uh, it's different where the tree grows is just between the inner bark and the sapwood that's where it's growing new cells and adding to its girth a new ring and more vessel elements this is this layer is the cambium it's it's very thin it's one cell wide layer and cambium is just a fancy latin word that means change if you go to italy where you see a business with cambio on it that's that's where you can exchange money so that's what cambium just means change you have another type of cells growing in the tree uh, growing from the pith out towards the bark and those are rays and ray cells grow this way and transport nutrients in this direction like so okay you, you get the idea you have lots of rays oops you get the idea you have lots of rays in the tree and rays are quite prominent feature could be quite prominent could be invisible so the rays in this species are white now here on the varnish side they really don't show up well but they do more so on the come on closer on the unfinished and here there you're looking at the vessel elements and the rays the rays are radiating out from from the pith and they are running like spokes or like rays of the sun that's why they are called rays towards the cambium so those are rays on end grain when rays rays continue uh, 
around the edge here and when they do so they form either visible or invisible lines these long lines here that on this in this view they are yellow like so those are rays shorter or longer wider and thicker some have different lengths all of these are rays on the on on edge grain this is how rays look like they are they have this smeary look and some of them have this orangey color that carries on from the from this band of growth and there is some minerals that the tree deposited in them and all of this is all of this marbled color or washed uh, look is due to the ray cells what you see is every single thing is a ray that's washed or smeared and the rays again continue out to the edge where they form these streaks on the face grain like so okay so that's basically uh, the botanical features that I wanted to point out with the with the tree